Hey, y'all. Welcome to the RSVP Show, where we get to the root of things and apply the Word of God to every aspect of our lives. Join your host, author and singer-songwriter April D. Metzler, as she and a few special guests dive deep into Scripture and demonstrate the Bible in action through their testimonies. April is passionate about understanding the heart behind every subject and helping you pursue a relationship with God for a victorious life every day. Are you ready for real, candid, and vulnerable conversations about God, His Word, and His love for you? Grab your Bible, pen, and study pad, and let's visit. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the RSVP show. I'm your host, April D. Metzler. And here with me today, I have a very special guest. And you may have already heard about her because her broadcast is definitely all over the world and about an ever-changing world. And I'll let her talk to you more about that here pretty quick. But I have with me here today, Janet Harley. How are you doing, sis? Hi, doing great. Hope you are, April. <laughs> I am too. I've been busy outside in this freezing cold weather here in Oklahoma. Oh, but it's cold here too. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a mess. That that whole storm yeah. system blew through and it dropped everybody's mm. temperatures all across the board. Oh, so. yeah. yeah, yeah. So how are you? Um, how are you doing in your area though? Before we get started, are you are you good today? How was your day today? Oh, it was a wonderful day today. Absolutely. You know, uh, when you wake up and and uh, uh, have your time with the Lord and it's just so special because if you if you do that, that everything else falls into place a mm. lot easier. So but it's been a great day. Awesome. Yeah. We, it sounds like we both knocked it out of the park today. God willing, always, of course, I'm, I'm thankful he's there with us because that's about the only way we can get through. <laughs> Ooh, amen to that. <laughs> so, of course, I'm going to go ahead and open up the floor for you to introduce yourself because we've been connected, but not everybody else knows you. So you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to our audience? Okay. Well, I'm Janet Harley. I'm a storyteller, a broadcaster, a speaker, and an author. And so uh, in the last... Uh, Let's see, it'll almost be three years ago. Uh, it's almost that time now, but I, I retired uh, to repurpose. And so I asked the Lord after I retired, I said, well, what do you want me to do next? Because, you know, God's work never stops. <laughs> so <laughs> you don't really retire. <laughs> so, um, so he laid this, uh, this broadcast on my heart, uh, faith in an ever changing world, encouragement and hope. And I have guests on who share their faith stories. It could be how faith helped them get through a situation in life, or it could be their testimony. And uh, I, my heart is just blessed each week uh, when I talk with these uh, with these guests, and um, it, it just uh, they they're able to share and to encourage other people and be an inspiration. Uh, gained a lot of brothers and sisters in Christ. That's awesome. Yeah. And of course, your show, if you guys haven't tuned into it, I encourage you to connect with her. She's on Facebook and YouTube with her broadcast. And you guys can tune into that. Um, just search her name or search her show and you'll find it. So it's very simple. And we'll give those links out at the end of the broadcast. But right now we're going to shift our focus to what everybody loves here on the RSVP show is hearing the word of God. So we're going to be sharing the scriptures over the airways and she's going to be reading out of her Bible, maybe. Is that what we're doing today? We got your Bible yeah. ready to go? Okay. <laughs> You're ready. All right. And so go ahead and share with them your first scripture, sis. Okay. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And I was telling April earlier, this is a uh, scripture that, that I call my life scripture uh, because it's just, I've 
is a go-to scripture for me for it's been a go-to scripture for a long time and it says trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight awesome and what translation are you reading out of hmm. um i believe that's an niv mm -hmm. niv yeah awesome all right so that is obviously a scripture that is powerful and it's one of those <laughs> sharper than any two-edged swords yes. because of course <laughs> if you're out of alignment and walking all crooked or wonky or whatever and you're yeah. sort of like off the path you're, you're gonna get cut a little bit with that accountability scripture so what are your thoughts on that and what's your experience in, in well, walking that out <laughs> okay okay um uh, now, uh, to me, you know, we are to trust God and not our own self. Mm -hmm. In other words, what we know, because God knows all things and he has that bigger picture. So uh, we need to lean on him instead of our own self. And at all times, we, we need to include God in everything we do. And this way, um, we give him a chance to keep uh, to keep us on the right track. In other words, he can make our path straight. So, uh, but we've just got to have, and it all boils down really to a relationship with the Lord and being that close to him. You know, if we draw near to him, he draws near to us. And uh, so he is always going to be watching out for us and uh, giving us his protection and um, helping us through whatever we, we need, whatever we need or whatever we may be going through. So um, but that uh, is 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 what I feel that that verse means. And he's pretty clear about it, isn't he, April? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, he is. It's there's a lot of um, big words in there, and there are only three letters, like all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh man. I think but, I think it's a good thing though that a lot of people you know have have that available because it's one of those widely used scriptures. So mm -hmm. you get it, you know, you see it in home decor areas, and um, you can order it on a shirt. You know, <laughs> it's yeah. one of those. But it's so okay. important. So yeah, it is. It is, and trusting God is so important. And when I pray and and uh, I just pray for him to help me trust him more because in this ever-changing world, um, he is our hope. He is our hope. And uh, so we, we need to just keep our trust and our faith in him. I like it. Yeah, it's it's so encouraging you know, just to hear sometimes hearing things that we know are true over and over and over again helps build our trust up build our faith up i've heard one time to, uh, one of the uh, biblical teachers say that um trust and faith are synonymous in some right. of the scriptures and that that's, that's so that. true but it says you know in scripture it says you know uh, faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. Right. And so mm -hmm. to build up our faith, to build up our trust is, you know, staying in the word of God. And then um, in that relationship, you know, because of course Jesus is the word. So you tie all that together, nice, neat, and a little bow. And it is, it goes right back. Like you said, to relationship. I, yeah. I'm right on board with what you're saying. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, it's, it's, it's a comfort for me to know that, because God knows everything and, and I go to him and ask him and, and to, and to trust him uh, with what's going on maybe in my life or a decision that we may need to make, or um, it, it could be anything that's going on in our lives. And it, if we put our trust in him, it is just such a comfort to know that he already knows Mm -hmm. and that he will help us through 
uh, that situation or decision and uh, that that we can certainly just put 100 percent of our trust in him. Right. And he already know he knows everything like in, yeah. before it even happened. And then after it. God. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I can see that that's comforting. That's like really, you know, it's it's one of those things where if you constantly remind yourself of that, you, it takes away the weight of responsibility for you to figure out everything. If God yeah. already knows it all, then why don't you lean into him a little yeah. bit? And yeah. he'll, he'll help you figure it out. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. He will. He will so, certainly do that. So as far as um, this joy in all seasons that we've titled this episode as, I, I want you to speak a little bit about uh, your experience uh, in the the joy department. Let's just call it that <laughs> joy department. Because <laughs> you have to you have to be able to find the department, right? You yeah. got to be able to open the door to the joy and find That's it right. and, and step That's through right. it, accept it, receive it, all that jazz. So it's got to be it's its own department. So you want to talk yeah. about that? <laughs> 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 well, you know, you we, we are right here in the season of joy, uh, the birth of Jesus. And uh, so certainly our joy and hope and peace and love, uh, all of that uh, surrounds this this season that we're in right now, the holiday season. But um, the word joy, you know, if you take a look at that, um, I looked it up in the dictionary, you know, the uh, Merriam-Webster dictionary, and uh, it says the emotion evoked by well-being, success, or good fortune, or by the prospect of possessing what one desires, Hmm. the expression or exhibition of such emotion, a state of happiness. Now, that's in the the dictionary now biblically true joy true joy is a gift from the lord and if we have the holy spirit inside of us dwelling inside of us we have pure joy we have pure joy well, you, joy, I, I'm not trying to interrupt, but you're making it sound awfully easy right now. <laughs> <laughs> easy for what do you mean by easy? Easy just to have joy. Like it's a uh-huh. you, yeah. You cut out there for a second. I was like, what? Easy for what? What? Yeah. <laughs> so um, no, just easy. It's uh, but in difficult situations, you know, like or or different trying circumstances or different things like that. Like yeah, Holy Spirit's there, and we have that joy. But yeah, That's sometimes. Right. The thief comes in and tries to steal that joy. So like. Absolutely. It's not always easy. (laughs) No, it is not. It is not always easy. And I I certainly don't mean it to sound, you know, to make it sound, well, this is, you know, but it sounds easy. But in real life, when real life happens, um, it's hard. It can be very difficult, uh, and you're right. You know, the devil can, they, he just wants to steal our joy. But knowing that we have the Holy Spirit that dwells in us and gives us that joy, that's why we can get through. We can have joy in all seasons, whether that be um, uh, losing someone, uh, it could be um, uh, having something uh, tragic happen in your life. Uh, and it, so it, 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 you can have joy in at any time because the Holy Spirit is there. But you have to believe. You have to believe in the Lord uh, and in God. And uh, in Romans uh, 15, 13, it says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. There's that trust again. So that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Now that is powerful right there. His word is powerful, but uh, that that particular verse uh, was very powerful to me. And um, did you know that the word joy is used almost 200 times in the King James Version Bible? Oh, wow. No, I didn't know that. That's awesome. I, I know. I, I looked up uh, some information today and I said, wow, 200 times. And it's um, always in reference to an emotional state of delight, wonder, bliss, happiness, and gladness. Mm. We are told repeatedly to be joyful, to be filled with joy and display our joy. Now that one, that piece right there, that last piece, that one's hard too. Like That's it's, hard. It's, it's hard. okay. You guys can mind you don't your own feel business. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> <laughs> if you're having a bad day or something happens or, you know, have you ever had those days, April, where nothing seems to go right? <laughs> Not yes. anything. <laughs> You're thinking, where is the joy? <laughs> where is my joy? But um, no, but, yeah, uh, I agree. It's it's hard. Yeah. Like your face is my face. Like says so many things it shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know the, the the true meaning of Christmas is celebrating joy. Uh, the angel said, "Good tidings of great joy." should be to all people so hmm. um but but joy is something that you know um as i'm getting older uh the more uh the closer i feel i guess to the lord and and the the relationship is is getting closer uh, my relationship to him and uh, with my friends and family, you know, all of that becomes more important uh, as you get older, or at least it has uh, has for me. And um, uh, another uh, Bible verse that that I had was was dealing with um, aging, and uh, it's Psalm ninety two fourteen. And um, it says they will still bear fruit in old age, they will stay fresh and green. And so this uh, particular uh, scripture, um, it bringing forth fruit in old age, um, it's like, you know, a tree that may be planted and watered and, and uh, they, they, in the in as the as they grow older, they still can bring forth the fruits, uh, uh, and just as we as older folks, we can bring forth fruits of righteousness, um, but shall continue and go on to do so. And even when they have grown old, contrary to all other trees, which when old cease bearing fruit, but so do not the righteous grace is often in the greatest vigor when nature is decayed and abraham is mentioned job is mentioned uh, david zechariah elizabeth um and uh so these are some some biblical people that grew old and still bore fruit. I mean, they just bared the fruit uh, for, for, uh, for the rest of their life, you know, because uh, they uh, all age to be pretty old uh, people. And so uh, it was just interesting to see uh, in that scripture how compared to trees, maybe, that may be watered and planted and they still can bear fruit. And then as we age, as people age, that we can still bear fruit too. So if any of you out there uh, watching or listening, um, and if you are retired, um, don't feel that you're, you're not needed. Don't feel that you can't do anything else anymore. You can. And uh, so you can still bear fruit. That is in the Bible. It says that. <laughs> 
I I thought that was interesting. One of the words that really stuck out to me that you used was like the fresh and green. So I I cross referenced it, and it yeah. actually even talks about being like luxuriant. Um, flourishing and there's just so many other references that it talks about but it's it's literally also um, an analogy for newness as well so what does it look like as we are aging through and um, walking this out with God to continuously be new and you could even tie that into what does it look like to be renewed continuously because every time you're renewed in your mind or renewed in you know your spirit and just drawing closer to him um it's your new you at the end Absolutely. of that process so yes. it's uh, is that is that something that ever ends you think i don't i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i am just grateful that Health-wise, uh, I am able, I am still able uh, to, to do and to work for the Lord. And I want to do it for as long as I possibly can. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I, di I, in, I have worked with seniors um, collectively about 20 years. And I retired from a, a retirement uh community and uh, with uh, about 15 years uh, experience there and, and loved it, loved it, uh, worked with families and the seniors and, and all, but um, th there's just so much, you know, you can learn from uh, uh, older folks. And, and that's why I wanted to encourage people. If you're retired, don't give up uh, on anything and, and, you know, stay active, stay active. And uh, because some of the uh, seniors I remember, they they sort of gave up, you know, they said they didn't know why they were still here. Why is God still have me here? Well, as long as you're breathing, um, God can use you. Uh, you can inspire someone else and uh, to uh, to love the Lord. So it doesn't mean uh, just because we're getting older doesn't mean that uh, we can't still serve, serve our Lord. Exactly. I agree. Um, I guess I'm going to talk about this visit a couple of times, but this gentleman just made a, a big impression on me. And I shared this uh, on the broadcast yesterday as well for the folks that tuned into that. But this gentleman had shared with me how uh, he had all these open doors through his position that led him to like 22 different countries. And as he was talking to me though, because I guess it was just one of those things where there was just so much I didn't know. And all of the things that he was saying was just this extra layer of, of wisdom, extra layer of experience that I'd never wow. had any part in. And it was just, it, <laughs> it was a humbling experience is what it was yeah. and to me personally. And it's like, there's just so much I don't know. You don't know that you don't know until you don't know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but it was just uh, amazing. But it, it was also a blessing all at the same time. And so I guess in that conversation, just through him sharing his life experiences and, um, and poor again, what he did, uh, to the conversation, he literally, um, it encouraged me to be joyful because it, that was the response. I was, I was joyful that I was in that moment, if that makes yeah. sense. So yeah. It sort yeah. of invoked it. It like it was initiated by him. <laughs> So, yeah, if you know, you know, if you're talking to these folks that are, are retired or soon to retire and uh, and thinking about what in the world am I supposed to do with myself now, you know, I don't have all this, you know, nine to five, eight hour stuff that they've yeah. got to do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, go, go plug into a, a ministry, go or start your own podcast, write a book, you know, pour yeah. out that wisdom that you already have and uh, and see how many people glean off of it because you and your life and your story, they all matter and God loves every minute of it. So, yes. um, yeah, so I just I just encourage that as well. Don't give up. But yeah. There's yeah. so much that you can do with the, your Absolutely. life experience. That's so. right. 
that's right. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, you, you never know uh, what the Lord and uh, will want you to do or, or, or ask you to do. The other thing is be obedient uh, to it because uh, that's when you're really uh, receive the blessing uh, from God. Oh, yeah. and, uh, but it, it's just, um, it is different when you're older. It is. And, uh, but you can still have joy. You can still have joy because the joy uh, is our Lord and in his strength. Uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So uh, it's just, but it's something you have to, to work at every day, you know? Uh, so it's, it's just like anything else. Um, so you just, uh, you get up and you have your time with the Lord and, and uh, talk with him about things. And then, um, but you do, you have to, um, because some days you don't, you get up and you don't feel as good maybe as you did the day before, or maybe you don't, uh, can't uh, do as many things as you did the day before. But um, you can certainly do something. And, uh, you know, serving God is um, when we serve others, we are more like God. And uh, so there's joy in that. There is joy in serving others. And whether it's, um, I know that I, I check on a neighbor, uh, that we have an older neighbor. And uh, because her, her spouse has passed away. Her husband passed away, yeah. and um, so uh, I try to uh, make uh, make it a part of my week's uh, to do list to check on her, whether I call her or go see her, uh, take her something. Uh, sometimes just sitting and visiting with her is is the best thing to do um, because loneliness uh, can set in. Uh, with, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, those are things, things that uh, we can certainly do too. And um, yeah, we don't have to set the world on fire or anything like that with something. It's just, uh, uh, just something simple like that, that we can do. I think you're right. I mean, I think that, you know, God, he is connected to us in such a way that he does he he's there always and he cares about every last detail of our lives exactly. and and he's it's that intimate relationship that he wants with us and desires yeah. to to walk with us in mm -hmm. and so when we pour out though even in in like my conversation with you right now just like just pouring into one another here and just building yeah. up each other and encouraging each other at this moment right. it's this it's he knows that and he sees it and and it does it it is its own setting the world on fire if we can impact it one is. heart with god's love and just pour <laughs> in even if it's a fellow brother or sister in christ you're still edifying the body which is one of the things that he calls us to do and mm -hmm. and encouraging one another in this the love and good works that he calls us to do you know it's it's th those are obedient uh actions and decisions on our parts and they matter every last bit of it matters but also i was laughing because of uh because you know uh sometimes i overdo it physically and i'll be <laughs> we're out on a farm and there's just stuff that you know yeah. i probably shouldn't be lifting or doing or whatever and i'll be like the next day i'll be so sore and i'll be like i don't even want to get out of bed but <laughs> this is one of those days you know I, I laugh to myself on those days it's like this is one of those days when god said to be still and i'm all for it <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I know where you're coming from. <laughs> well, and if even if you're how much time like, OK, it doesn't take very long to say hello to someone. Right. And so it's the same thing with God in, in a relationship. It doesn't take that much time to have a conversation with them. But in scripture, it talks about how we can minister to the Lord. And that's with our worship, our praise. Well, you know, worship isn't 
on a stage somewhere. It's mm -hmm. it's that that intimacy with the Father. It's that submission to Him. It's being in that moment with Him. It's praising His name. It's thanking That's Him. Right. It's it's talking to Him. It's like yeah. acknowledging His existence. <laughs> you got a certain time. You can do that all during the day. Yeah. You know, uh, whether you're driving the car or um, uh, or or you're at home um, or at work. You know. It's uh, wherever you are, because it that's, uh, and it could be a whispered prayer. Uh, it doesn't have to be a lot of fancy words and because he knows our heart. He knows our heart. And um, so we just he just wants us to share it with him. Mm, yeah. I wait. We did. I do the introductions and go right into the conversation. Did we pray? I don't think we prayed, did we? We didn't. Pray. Lord, you know we what, didn't. though? It's never too late. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you brought the word up, so we're going to do it. I apologize, you guys. Usually I cover these broadcasts at the beginning, but again, like I said, it's never too late to pray. So if you'll join us real quick, we're going to pray. <laughs> Go ahead, Janet. Okay. Lord, we just want to thank you. We just have grateful hearts. Uh, for your love and your hope and your um, your your willingness, Lord, to uh, to love us as we are. Oh my goodness! And pray, Father, for this broadcast, every part of it, Father. We just ask for your hand to be on it, and um, just. Uh, for those who are listening, Lord, we just pray that their minds and hearts would be open. And uh, we just pray, Father, I just pray for April and uh, just pray that you will give her uh, wisdom, give her knowledge, Father, to give her um, give her peace and strength as well. And uh, just bless her to continue to bless her in her work for you. And uh, Father, we just give you thanks again and uh, just be with us and forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Yeah, she, she's praying over me, y'all. I, I wasn't expecting that. Thank you. I, I accept and receive the blessing. <laughs> Good. Good. Yes. Yeah. We need to pray for each other. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah, Ooh, and that's see, the greatest support and greatest gift we can give anyone is to pray for them. I, I agree. I agree. And being still in bed or whatever you're doing on those those rough days, you can pray. <laughs> that's right. That's exactly right. And uh, because God will hear us and uh, uh, bless us, and, and see, there's joy in that too. Mm -hmm. In praying. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, got all serious and deep real quick. We went, whew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, okay, you went and retired and you did so with intentionality, though. Like you actually had a purpose. And you want to speak to that a little bit, too, sure. um, just for the listening audience? Sure. Um, I, uh, it, I retired and to repurpose. And so I, um, you know, after you retire, you sort of want to take a week or two, you know, just kind of <laughs> relax a little bit and kind of get away from, get into, because it, you have to establish another routine because you're not getting up and getting dressed and heading out to work. That was your purpose that you had. So you, you have to readjust and uh, for for a few days, I thought, well, I'm just on vacation. <laughs> so, but then when I later, after another week or a month, and 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 all went by, uh, you know, you realize that uh, you're no longer have that purpose, you know, that you got up and you did and you got dressed for, and and um, so, but I just. I just had this feeling that God wasn't finished with me and that he had something um, for me to do. And, you know, God calls us into things, into something, 
and then calls us out and calls us into something else. So um, that's how I've kind of, I was talking to somebody the other day and that I, I mentioned that and I said, you know, that's kind of the flow of how, <laughs> how he works. So, um, but I just uh, asked him one day, I said, Lord, what is it that you want me to do now? Because I knew that um, I just couldn't sit around and drink coffee all the time and and just uh, not do anything. I have never I have always been uh, a person that I, I've wanted to do something, you know, had something to do. So when he laid this broadcast uh, on my heart, because I've had some theater experience, I've studied theater uh, and um, worked in radio, radio and television some. And so I sort of knew a little bit about, you know, broadcasting and, and what to do and, and all of that. So I have just asked him to grow it however he wants to for it to be grown um, and uh, to uh, uh and in, in, I'm trying to be as faithful as I know uh, to be uh, until he calls me to do something else. So, um, but that's kind of how that uh, the broadcast started. And it has just grown, like I say, uh, on a couple of networks uh, right now. And so, um, but it's just been very interesting and um, just a, a blessing for me, uh, meeting uh, all these uh, various and different people and um, talking with the faith-based folks in, in uh, film, you know, faith-based films. And so they are just making such great um, strides right now and, and just doing so, so many beautiful things, uh, films and so well done and uh, series and, and everything. So, um, because entertainment, we need good entertainment for our families again, and uh, to have that good family entertainment and uh, faith-based. So uh, have enjoyed so very much uh, talking to people in, in various um, positions with the faith-based industry. So, um, but God is blessing that. And um, so I just, uh, I look forward to a new year coming up and uh, what, uh, what the Lord and, and you as well, what the Lord has for our broadcast, uh, what he has in store for us. There's no telling what's coming around the corner for 2023. I'm trying my best to just get through today. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, but I know, uh, you think about woo, another year. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, Nancy Arazo is on here. I'm just going to take a moment to acknowledge some of these comments, but she's okay. she's in full agreement. And she says, that's right. There is no age limit on serving. And yes, we can choose joy. I love that word usage of choose because it is one of those things yeah. where where these, these things are laid before us, you know, we can either choose life or death, you know, truth or, or you know, the lie that yeah. the world gives us, um, light or dark, you know, there's always a, a choice that we have That's before right. us. But yeah, right. we could we could give, you know, get sucked into anxiety or depression or Ooh, sadness so easily to do that. Yes. Yeah. Or we even despair. Despair is horrible. I've had a, a few a few meetings, one or two or, or a, a, a lot, a few. I don't know. I don't know. I've been through quite a bit, but <laughs> despair is not a nice guy. I don't like him. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's right. Me but, either. Me yeah. either. But there's just so much, though. Um, I wanted to highlight. Oh, you used a, a good turn of phrase there about how the you're faithful with, um, as far as you know, you know how to be faithful. You're yeah. that. You know, I I loved that. It just was so <laughs> profound, but it was so full of grace to yourself. You know how it says, you know, to to show grace to others, but you know, obviously, we need to be 
um, showing that grace to ourselves as well. Yeah. And instead of beating ourselves up or being our own worst critic, um, I know, and that's, you said so that well, well though. That. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, do like, you do you beat yourself up or are just, you are you I used to do it a lot more than I do now now I think oh I'm older <laughs> you sort of fall back on that oh I'm older now so it's <laughs> you know. maybe I need to be nice but, to myself <laughs> oh goodness well okay so think about it on years terms like what if you say you spent half your life beating yourself up you know it's going to take half your, the next half of your life to make up to yourself <laughs> Just, how about you be nice to yourself right that's what we need to need to do we that's all right. need to be nice to ourselves a little bit that's you know right. That's um, true. but what does that look like though in action to to really just practice being nice to yourself since you have some experience to it? You wanna um and it's coming up, you wanna share about that? Like it takes an extra effort or how does that work with your life? Yeah, I, I think um since I have gotten older, because you know, when um when you're young and you are working and you want to do your best and you feel like you've got to got to do um top notch you know and you put pressure on yourself but since i'm retired i i don't have pressure i don't feel pressure uh, anymore now if any young folks watching listen don't put pressure on yourself because <laughs> it's April. Wait, this way, don't this way, pressure. this way. <laughs> <laughs> don't put the pressure on yourself. Learn now <laughs> because uh, uh, if you if you talk with the Lord daily, all during the day, and it, just ask Him, oh, help me, Lord. Or uh, thank you, Lord. I, I I really needed that. Or you know, then then you've got that good relationship with Him going, and you know, that good communication with Him. And um, so, if you have Him, you don't need the world pressure on you. You know, the Lord wants us to cast our burdens, cast our burdens. He wants us to be joyful. He wants us to experience his joy. And so we that's that's something that as an older person trying to help a younger person, <laughs> I would encourage you uh, to do that and, and lean not on what you know, but trust in him and uh, and be joyful in him because uh, but since i retired i have not uh, i don't put that pressure on me uh much anymore but i used to um of course with theater and all that oh i should have said it that way or i could have done it that way the other way i wish i had of you know and it, but it's that moment's gone and you know only you probably thought <laughs> that kind of thing that people watching they didn't know and uh so you just kind of uh have to lighten up so to speak lighten <laughs> up, you know <laughs> just lighten up kind <laughs> of go into the mirror and look yourself in the face and say lighten up <laughs> yes 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 you are god's masterpiece lighten up <laughs> that that works yeah so um did you have to did you have to like um practice that to get to the point where you are or was it literally just that that dynamic shift of the job leaving you know um how do you handle it with your podcast do you, you get or your broadcasting or whatever you, you decide you want to do that day um how do you handle it? Like, do you put pressure on yourself now still just a little bit or? You know, I did. When I first started the broadcast, I did a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. because I thought this is for the Lord. <laughs> OK, so I want to I want it to be good uh, and I want to do the right thing and say the right things. And um, so but now uh, um you know, I'm into the second year of it and I'm not as, I don't have, I don't do that 
that much now with it. So, and, and after you, you do it for a while, you kind of get it down to a science <laughs> with your promoting it and having the guests lined up and uh, getting the information you need, et cetera. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it works like an oiled machine, so to speak, I guess, <laughs> after a no. while. That's, that's good. That, yeah, that, that works because it is. It's like you do the same thing over and over again and it, it, it becomes like habit or second nature yeah. when yeah. you're doing second these. Nature. But that first year, man, if you can get it past the first year, you are golden. <laughs> Just endure. Work on scriptures of endurance and perseverance. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh what is it Matt, matthew 6 like you know the cure for anxiety you know focus on that one too consider the lilies <laughs> yeah, consider the lilies absolutely absolutely but that's with i think that's with all new things though all new adventures all all new changes in life that we go through we all go through transitions Yep. in life you know you 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 leave home go to school or you get married you get a job uh have children you know all those are major kinds of transitions in your lives and uh, uh then you re retire you know that's a huge one um things are different and uh so but when you when you're with the lord and got that relationship with him and uh, you just trusted him and not on your own self. And uh, he will make your path straight. He will make your path straight. And you will have joy. Yes, you will. I love that. Well, sis, I want to talk to you a minute here about where they can connect with you. Um, okay. uh, what you want to highlight, YouTube or Facebook first? It doesn't matter. Whatever you've got up there first. Uh, yeah, uh, I am my Facebook page, Faith in an Ever-Changing World. And you can just put that in the search bar there and uh, get to my page. Would love for you to like it and uh, then subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, it is my name. You just search my name. And uh, so that's uh, that's <laughs> where you can find me on YouTube. And uh, so would love for you to uh, subscribe. And do you do you actually um, shoot yours over to any podcast streaming platforms um, when you release it? Or do we need to talk about that afterwards? <laughs> yeah, that would be great. That would be something we could talk about. All right, because you have all that content out there and all those interviews, and we can set you up, girl. So <laughs> I, I'm going to surprise the audience, though, with this oh. next highlight. She has <laughs> written a book, and it is something that you are going to enjoy so much. It is just a closer stumble with the. You want to tell them about it? <laughs> yes, uh, this was... Uh, it, Several years ago, uh, and being a storyteller in the early 90s, I uh, started storytelling, a uh, segue from theater to storytelling. Still did some theater, though. I still worked in theater, but um, loved storytelling and started writing some stories. So stories over the years uh, that uh, I collected. And so I just published them in a book. And uh, they're funny, touching, and sometimes true Southern stories uh, about our not so steady walk with the Lord. So, um, and they're short. It won't take you long uh, to read it, but uh, it, you can find it on Amazon. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Remember, just a closer stumble with the, it's catchy, right? You guys, you, you can figure it out. Also though, and it's been a minute because of lovely COVID shutting all of this down, but I think that yeah. there's a lot of states that are getting back into the, the swing of things like they're supposed to. And then of course they're doing virtual engagements now too. Mm -hmm. But yep. 
Janet, she is a speaker and she knows her stuff. Obviously, she has been around a minute and obviously she just said that um, and all chopped full of wisdom, encouragement and building up your audience. So if you guys are interested in booking her, you can email her and you want to um, read your email real quick, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Janet Storyteller at gmail.com. There you go, you guys. Okay, so definitely go ahead and send her an email and get her booked in because, you know, she's got a busy schedule. This lady <laughs> is all over the place. I see her interviews and everything that she does, and she is just such a blessing. So um, any final thoughts that you'd like to pour into the audience listening? Um, I just think that... Um, uh, to, to feel pure joy is in the Lord. And so always trust him in everything, no matter what's going on in your life. Because if you don't have him, you don't have anything. Hmm. He is our all. That's a good ending. <laughs> That's a great final thought. Glory to God. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is going to be our final episode for this season. But you guys know that we'll be back with some more episodes in the next season. And thank you so much. God loves you. You are not alone. He is literally just a conversation away. And that relationship is just right there waiting for you to be just build into it, quality time investment, all that jazz. So definitely invest that time. So thank you guys. See you next time, next season. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I've actually got to get the intro. See, I'm, I'm doing a blooper on my last episode. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much for listening to this episode of RSVP show. We hope these moments of reflection and stillness for victory in your pursuit of God were a blessing to you. Stay connected with April at April D. Methler through social media. New music singles and her debut music album are available to add to your favorite playlist on streaming platforms. And you can get a copy of her book wherever books are sold. Learn more about the great things she's doing to bless God and his people on her website at AprilDMetzler.com. Thank you for joining this visit with us. Always remember, God loves you.